Dorothy is a friend of mine I see her all the time She'll dance when I play on circular key She's got no money to put in my case But the smile on her face Will always make my day Dorothy doesn't have any place to call home So she treats Sydney as if it's her own scurry to the ferry all day in too much of a hurry to hear what I play and Dorothy with time to spare dances around and calls for a chorus of the bag ladies walls and the chorus goes dance dance Dorothy dance I've got a guitar she hears an orchestra dance dance Dorothy, dance and your spirit will be free. Na, 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 na. Very few people know, although the numbers are increasing, that Cinderella actually had a dyslexic cousin. Now, I learned part of the story from a woman called Vicky Marie from Townsville. And part of it I learnt from an auntie who used to say everything back to front or frack to bunt, if you like. So instead of fish and chips, it was always chis and fips. Boot polish became poot polish, and so it went. And when I was just a lad, I used to think this was fabulous. But looking back on it now, she was always calling me a shining wit. So this is the story of Rinda Seller, Cinderella's dyslexic cousin. Once upon a time, in a far away listening gland, there lived a beautiful girl, and her name was Rinda Seller. Now Rinda Seller lived with her mugly other and two sad blisters. And they greeted her tadly. They made her bub the scruff, dosh the wishes, and flop the maw with a bopy sucket. <laughs> now, also in the same Corin country lived a very prancing hints. <laughs> and he was a pretty fart smeller. <laughs> Now, one day, the ling of the can announced there would be a bancy fall. A magic maul for his son, the Pransom Hints, could meet all the prelanted and titty ladies of the land. You see, the Pransom Hints was city prick of seeing Bingle. So he invited the people for Riles a mound especially the pitch wrinkle. <laughs> now, Rinda Seller's mugly other and two sad blisters, they went out to buy some drancy fesses to wear to this fancy fall. But Rinda Seller couldn't go because all she had to wear was some old rirty dags. <laughs> so she just cat down and shried. Ah. Oh. Now they're sure bit. She just cat down and shrine. Oh, very good. Now there's two more of them coming. You keep an ear out for it. Now while she was kitting their shrine, there appeared before her a, a flinding blush. 
and there was Gehari Madhvara. <laughs> and she said, Rindasala, seat your wishing, for I shall make you a tragic mess, <laughs> and you may bow to the gall. And with one touch of her magic mond, there instantly appeared a kig boat and hicks white sauces <laughs> to take her to the Bansy Fall. But she said... Everybody knows about the hard-working bees who attend to the plants and make honey as they please. Help the plants make seeds, make sure the birds keep feeding, and the bugs and the bees and us people keep on breeding. Now the birds and the the birds and the bees and the bugs are a humming Cause they know that pollination week is a coming Life on earth depends on how pollination ends So you better listen hard and help me friends There was movement at the bus stop, for the word had passed around that the 805 from Strathfield would be late. They were watching on the tracker, and its pace was getting slacker, and everybody gathered there knew what would be their fate. All the usual crowd was there, just like clockwork, it was fair to say they waited for each other, as much as waited for the bus. Each morning at that shelter, it was peace before the helter and the skelter of their city life did wrap them in its glove. But they heaved a heavy sigh, for at last their bus was nigh. And the driver gave this explanation, as his grin did grow. A custard carrying lorry hit another carrying jelly, which was then hit by a sponge cake van. So we'd been a trifle slow. <laughs> now they knew their driver's way. He transported them each day. And he liked to have a laugh with them or a dad joke he would make. But one was there, young Sue, said, I have an interview. I'm going for promotion. I won't get it if I'm late. Now the driver, Grant, was cruisy, but he held a torch for Susie and his mind went racing onwards as he heard she's in a spot. If I get her there in time, well, maybe she'll be mine. So off he rushed, the fastest that speed dating ever got. I must be...